Welcome to Liberty Ministries International, a ministry that is dedicated to your personal development and spiritual growth. Here, we equip you with tools and resources that will facilitate your transformation into what God has ordained you to be. And now, Reverend Lara brings you today's inspirational message. Let us celebrate our Lord and King. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the reason for this season. Amen. He is the reason for this season. Jesus is the reason why we are rejoicing today as we com commemorate the birth of our Lord and Savior. As we commemorate his birth. Amen. Let us just have fun in his presence. Appreciate him, enjoy him, and hear what he has to say to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you. Yes, please help me to share this broadcast today. I know that many people will be preoccupied right now, just enjoying the festive season, just celebrating the birth, uh, the coming, the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing today. I know that, but let us invite as many people as possible because we're only going to be together for a short period today. And then we can go back and um, to our uh, dance, 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 menu, menu, menu. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas, Chisholm. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us just be in the attitude of thanksgiving. Let's be in the attitude of prayer. As we come before the Lord our God, the Bible says that we should come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. So let, let us begin to praise him right now. Hallelujah. For our God is good. He is worthy of our praises. He is worthy of our praises. The Lord is worthy of our praises. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our adoration. Let us just begin to thank God even for this day that we have set aside to remember the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that he's coming back the second time. But right now we are commemorating his first coming. The fact that he came to rescue us. The fact that he came to restore us back to the Father. Lord, we thank you today. We give you glory today. We exalt you. We magnify you. Father God, we thank you. The, the Bible says that behold... What manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son to us to come and rescue us, to come and give us abundant life. We appreciate you. So, Father God, as we gather today to just celebrate you, to celebrate the, the fact that you gave us your only son, to make us your son as well, to bring us into your household, to become citizens of your kingdom. Lord, I thank you that, that you will gather with us today, oh Lord, that you will preside over our gathering today in Jesus' mighty name. That Father God, you will speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. And as we lift our uh, uh, appreciation to you. God, I thank you that you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every man and every woman on the, on the platform today. Thank you, Father God, for your hand upon our lives throughout the night. You have told us that this is our year. At the beginning of this year, you said this is our year of enlargement. Lord, I thank you because you have enlarged us in, in different ways, in different forms. You have increased us. You have not allowed us to decrease. You have prevented us from suffering losses. Hallelujah. You have not allowed losses to come into our lives. You have increased us. You have multiplied us. You have added to us. Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you. So we say, oh Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus, because we are listening to you. Holy Spirit of God, I depend on you for the short time that we have together as, as your people. I pray in Jesus' name that you anoint me to speak what is in the heart of the Father, even that which you have prepared me to share tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak through me, O Lord. Think through me, O Lord. Let it not be my word. Let it be your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight tonight, O Lord, my Redeemer. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, so wonderful to see you, Elizabeth. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, everybody. If you don't comment, I can't see your name, so I can't I can't um say Merry Christmas to you. So comment so I can I can wish you Merry. I can see your name, I can see your icon, and I can wish you a Merry Christmas. God bless you richly. 
So today is Christmas. Isn't it amazing that today is Sunday that we would normally gather together just to hear what the Father has to say to us and to lift our worship to Him. But today also happens to be Christmas Day. So it is double celebration. Hallelujah. It is double celebration. So today is Christmas Day. And, and continuing on from last week, we're going to look at the reason why Jesus came. Because we, He has come. You know, um, he, we, we, the, last week we said that a, a son, unto us a son is given. You know, he came, a son was given to us, he came to rescue us. So today we are looking at the reason why he came. So I want to speak to you from the subject of the reason why he came. The reason why he came. And I know that he has already saying, probably saying in your in your heart that yes, we know why Jesus came. You know, you've mentioned it so many times, we've read it in the Bible, but let's just have an open mind tonight and hear what the Father has to say to us. So if you have your Bible with you, please open with me to the book of John, John chapter 10, verse 10. Another very popular scripture that we know. John chapter 10, verse 10. This is Jesus Christ's mission statement here. Amen. So let us let us reflect on this mission statement tonight. And it reads, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And have it to the full. So we are going to focus on I have come, Jesus' mission statement here on earth. This is the, his mission statement. You know, as, as an organization, as an entity, any entity, any organization, Kate, God bless you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, gift, yeah, Jesus is the best gift ever. So any organization will always have a mission statement, right? So our the, the reason why our Lord came as well, he is telling us, he said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Merry Christmas, Tessie. God bless you. Good to see you. So Jesus came that you may have life and have it to the full. Okay, not a mediocre life. He come to give you a life that is abundant. That is the that is the scripture that we are the version that we are familiar with. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So he has come to give you an abundant life. Hallelujah. The gift of Jesus is the most perfect gift of all time that 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 is incomparable to anything there is in this world or that is conceivable by man. There isn't anything that is conceivable that you can compare the gift of Jesus with. He is the, he is the best gift. He is the perfect gift. He is the all-purpose gift. He is the gift for everything, everything in life. Hallelujah. You can find everything in life with Jesus. He is the perfect gift. You, so, you see, the Father God, he looked at us in our lostness. We were lost without him in the world. He looked at us in our lostness, in the wretched, defeated way we were living our lives. And he saw that there was no way we could find, we could have the life that, that he originally created us to have. He saw that we were incapable of having that life on our own. The, the, the life that he originally wants us to have. He saw he saw our weaknesses and our frailties. The Father, Father God, he saw that, that our minds were deficient and incapable of knowing right from wrong. And we were incapable of finding our way back to him on our own. So he decided to send Jesus Christ to us. Are you not grateful? Are you not grateful that he sent Jesus Christ to us? Are you not grateful that he, 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 he gave us, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3 um, verse, uh, uh, verse 16, one of those popular scriptures that we know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Father God saw that we were incapable of finding our way back to him, but he loves us so much that he, does, he did not want to leave us to, to our in our own mess. He didn't want to leave us to our own devices. He didn't want to leave us to our own weaknesses. He decided to, to be drastic. 
he took a drastic action hallelujah he took a drastic action and and he he sent his only son to us and that is what we're celebrating today that is what we're celebrating today and jesus jesus he came and then he told us the reason why he came he said that he has come so that he could give us the abundant life that we're incapable of living on our own because there is a purpose for which God sent us into this world. There is a purpose for you in this earth. You are not here aimlessly. You are here on purpose by the divine purpose of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because you are incapable of finding it yourself, you are incapable of living it yourself. The Lord decided to send his only son, jesus christ because before he came before christ came we were not living this if we we're not living a full life but we we're living a defeated life we we're living a defeated life even though the carnal mind will not want to accept this the, the carnal mind will not would, would want to think that we're living a fulfilled life but the truth of the matter is that a life without christ without christ it is impossible to live a full life Without Jesus Christ, it is impossible to live that abundant life. A life without Christ is a defeated life. A life without Jesus Christ is a defeated life. You may cover it up with money, lots of it. You may cover it up with wealth, with your status, with your accomplishments, your achievements, your, 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 your wealth. You may cover it up with your network of people the people that you know your status in the community but that is still superficial that is still shallow at best okay no matter how much you try to cover it up with with a, with a superficial thing it is still a defeated life it is still superficial it is still not deep it is only skin deep at best and, and, and it doesn't go any deeper because a life like that will crumble at the sight of, of, the, of the slightest challenge. It will crumble. It cannot stand a trial. It cannot, it, it cannot stand adversity. It cannot develop and grow and be mature. It is a, a, a superficial, weak life that is only covered up cosmetically with material stuff fleeting stuff things that are not that are not permanent that are fleeting that are passing hallelujah there is no amount of money that can buy you true joy and true peace no amount of money no amount of money can buy you true friendship you know what the more money you have the more fake friends you will attract. The more success you have, the more fake friends you will attract because people will come to you whether you like it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, no matter how much they say that they are Christians, they will come to you when they know that you have something that they want or that they need, that they can get something from you. They can get an influence from you. They can get money from you that you are useful to them one way or the other. So there is no amount of success that you can have that can buy you true friendship. There is no amount of wealth that can truly keep depression at bay. We have seen so many billionaires, millionaires who are truly deeply depressed. We have seen many popular um, um, musicians and 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 stars and and they had mansions and everything and they were still committing suicide not that we are deriding them not that we are mocking them but we are stating the fact we are stating the fact that no matter how much money you have no matter how much wealth you have no matter what it is you have that is outside of jesus christ cannot buy you peace it cannot keep depression at bay it cannot buy you true joy it cannot keep your heart from fear and anxiety. That is why Jesus told us, Jesus told us in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, that your life is not measured by the amount of material wealth you have. Go and study that scripture again. It's that the life of man is not measured in the abundance of wealth that he has. 
you know, we cannot, no matter how smart we are, we cannot outsmart our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We cannot outsmart the Bible. The best thing we can do is to, is to um, submit ourselves to the Word of God and allow the Word of God and allow God to help us, the Word of God to build us and to make us into what He wants us to be. A life without Christ is a defeated life. It, it cannot live a fulfilled life. And I submit to you very boldly and confidently that no matter how much money you have, how much wealth you have, if you don't have Christ, you are defeated already. You are defeated already because in the midnight hour when nobody is there when you are there alone in your bedroom when there is nobody to talk to everybody you talk to is about what they want to get from you or how what you can do for them when you are there alone nobody understands how you feel nobody see the depth of your heart nobody see the depth of your pain nobody can comfort you like god can comfort you nobody can can wrap their arms around you like god can wrap his arms around you nobody can save you like he can save you nobody can can give you peace like he can give you peace nobody can give you hope like he can give you hope and you cry and you cry nobody can see your tears nobody sees you crying i don't know why i am stressing this emphasizing this but i believe there is somebody here who needs to hear this tonight that jesus is the way the truth and the life and the bible says that he has come he said i have come to give you abundant life as you celebrate christmas i want you to know that it's not about the gifts that you exchange it's not about the the expensive gift that you you are all looking at who could who can out give each other that i I'll give you expensive gifts more than what you can give me. It's not about who gives you a card or who does not give you a card. It is about the fact that Jesus came to rescue you. He came to rescue you from a wretched life, from a defeated life. He came to give you abundant life. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world, the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish. You will not perish. The, the Lord does not want you. He does not desire that you should perish. Not just perish like to die and, and separate and to be separate from him um, forever. That is one. Two is that while you are here on earth, he doesn't want you to live a perished life, an unfulfilled life, a frustrated life. He wants you to live an abundant life. Hallelujah. He wants you to live a life that is not dominated by, by anxieties and worries and depression and sadness and sorrow and unhappiness. He wants you to live a fulfilled life. He wants you to live a fulfilled life. I pray over you, whoever you are, that your heart will be open today to receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and your Savior. Your Lord and your Savior who is able to save you to the uttermost, who is able to wipe away your tears, who is able to support you when everybody else leaves you, who is able to lift you up, hallelujah, and help you to fulfill your purpose and your destiny in life in Jesus' mighty name. Receive him into your heart today if you haven't because that is why he came. That is why he came. He came to give you a life that is of a good quality, a good quality of life. He says, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. The Christmas that you're celebrating today, it's not just about the food. Yes, we should eat. Yes, we should drink. Yes, we should dance. Yes, we should exchange gifts. Yes, we should celebrate and be happy because we are commemorating the coming of our Lord and Savior, the first coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But in all of it, let us not forget the reason why he came. He came to give you a fulfilled life. Abundant life is the good quality life. A good quality life. Not a life that is dominated by sickness. Not a life that is dominated by worry. Not a life that is dominated by anxiety, by failures. I feel, I feel the hand of God upon that word, failure. Whoever, whoever it is right now that you have been experiencing failures, that the enemy has put your life in a cycle of failure and defeat. 
I break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that cycle off of you now in Jesus' name. I declare and I decree that you will be able to live the abundant life, that you are free to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ has come to give you in the name of Jesus Christ. He says that he has come that you may have a fulfilled life, that you may live a fulfilled life. Whatever it is that has put your life on repeat mode, repeat mode of failures, repeat mode of frustration, I break it out of, off of you now in Jesus' name. I command a separation between you and that entity now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will live a fulfilled life. You will be fulfilled. You will be fulfilled. You will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. A good quality life. Not a poor quality life. He came you to give he came to give you a good quality life. Jesus said, I have come to give you a fulfilled life, an abundant life full of vitality and vigor. So much as God wants us to be successful, because I don't want you to get it twisted, what I'm saying, and think that success is a bad thing. Success is a good thing. Success is not only a good thing. Success is a God thing. So God wants you to be a to be successful, to be a success in life. In as much as he wants us to be successful in all your endeavors, he wants you to be successful in all your endeavors in life. Jesus wants your life to be more meaningful than any superficial achievements that cannot stand the test of life. He wants your life to be more meaningful than any, any superficial achievements. You know, some people, their lives are defined by what, by what they have. You know, if they don't have the car that the, the other that other people are driving or the kind of car that other people are driving or the kind of job that other people have or the kind of businesses that other people have, you know, they want to they want to keep in with the Joneses. You know, they want to be with, yeah, wear what everybody else is wearing, wear the latest uh, uh, um, trend, wear this, wear, be this, be that. You know, if they're not able to achieve that, they feel less than. They don't believe that their lives have any value. I've come to tell you today that your life is valuable. Your life is not contingent on what you have. No matter what you have or you don't have, you are valuable. Jesus has come to let you know that 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 your life is more meaningful than any superficial, superficial achievement that, that, that cannot stand the test of life. He wants your life to be full and rich, okay? Even if you are not where you want to be yet, even when you haven't got what you want to get yet, okay? He wants your life to be, to be full and rich. The value of your life is weightier than the amount of achievements or your network or your net worth or anything else this world has to offer you. Jesus has come to give you a good quality of life, a quality of life that is superior to anything the world has to offer you. That is superior. Don't measure your life by, by whether you are married or not, by whether you have children or not, by whether you have big businesses or not, Again, not that God does not want us to have these things. These things are given us to enjoy, but they don't measure, they don't, they, they don't place it. Oh my goodness, help me to express this. Your life, the quality of your life is weightier than that. You are, you are still, you are anointed when you are and, and gifted and blessed and loved. Whether you are living in a rented accommodation or you are living in, in, in your own house. The presence of God upon your life, the glory of God upon your life, is not determined by external factors. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. The glory of God upon your life. You know, there is time for everything. There, you're, if, if you are not yet manifesting your vision, your dream, what you believe that God has called you to be and where he's taking you, it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time before that manifests. But in the meantime, you are still valuable. God still loves you. His, his glory is still upon you. His grace is still upon you. Hallelujah. So your life is valuable, more valuable and weightier than anything. So if you lose money today, if you lose a house today, if you lose anything today, 
that doesn't diminish you, okay? Because you still have the same intelligence. You still have the same strength. You still have the same vision. You still have the same creativity. Because the power of God upon you doesn't diminish based on what you have lost. Anything you may have lost in this year, you don't need it to go into the next year. It may be painful, okay? It may be painful, but you need to accept. You need to believe that and accept that God knows what he's doing, okay? And for where you are going, you don't need those things. Those things have, com they have completed their purposes in your life. And be, uh, be expectant of the more greater and glorious things that are available, that are, that, are, that are waiting for you in the future. Hallelujah. So your, the quality of your life, the value of your life is not dependent on anything you were able to achieve or not able to achieve. Hallelujah. That is what I'm trying to say to you. That you don't, 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 I've seen many people, they brag about what they have or what they do, who they are. All of that can be taken away like that. And when all of that is taken away from them, does that mean that they are not, um, they're, they're, they're not valuable anymore? It doesn't mean so. It is just that it, 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 is a, it is an error to place a value on those things, external things that are, that are uh, not, that are temporary than to place more value on yourself and the glory of God upon your life. So you have a good quality of life. Hallelujah. You have a good quality of life. God wants you to have a good quality of life. And that, and this is a thing that it's, it's a mind shift thing that we need to continue to renew our mind on a daily basis to remember who we are in Christ. To remember that no matter who cheated you, no matter who took things away from you, no matter who betrayed you, they haven't taken the essence of who you are away from you. Okay. The Lord said that I have come that you may have a fulfilled life and nobody, no entity, no demon in hell, no witch, no warlock, nothing, no hex, no curse can change that. Okay. Can take that away from you. Can stop Jesus from giving you that fulfilled life. You need to believe that. You need to look at Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith and believe his word, every word that he speaks to you. Hallelujah and receive it and hold on to it and stand upon it and live by it thank you jesus so 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 he, he has come to give you a good quality of life abundant life is a good quality of life the abundant life is so it also includes peace and I will, I will end up on this because I have promised that we are not going to be, you know, we're only going to be here for a few minutes today. So I'm just going to talk about this. Peace. Peace. The Lord wants you to have peace in your life. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly and leave it to the full. Okay. And, and this includes peace and joy. You can have a life that is full of peace, even right in the middle of a storm. I know that oh, this year, m many of us will have gone through all kinds of storms of life. It is, it is part of life. Life is just lifing. It, it, it's nothing new, right? That we go through any type of storm, okay? But right in the middle of the storm, you are still able to enjoy the peace of God. You can have a life that is full of peace, right? In the very middle of that storm. That is why Jesus tells us in John chapter 14 verse 27. Just, Jesus he told us in John chapter 14 verse 27. He says peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. Peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. And I stop and think about how does the world give you peace? He says, my peace, I live with you. Not as the world gives you. Do I give you my own peace? You know, you see the peace of God, as I said, cannot be, cannot be intimidated by external circumstances. It doesn't deny that those things are there. It doesn't deny that those things are happening. It doesn't deny that those things are painful. It does not deny that those things are uncomfortable or inconvenient it doesn't
deny any of that, that those things are unwanted, that they're painful, that we would rather those things do not happen. It doesn't deny it, but it, it is still centered. You know, you're, you are centered in your core. You are, you are standing in the peace of God. Oh, Lord, help me to express this as you give it to me. It says, not as the world gives. The world will tell you that um, if you do this, and I will do this. Okay, if you if you are able to do this, and I will give you this. The, the, peace, the peace of this world is transactional. It is selfish. It is not selfless. Because you have to pause and, and look at what, and think about what Jesus is saying in that scripture. He says, peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives as the world gives so you need to look at the difference you need to be intentional about looking at the difference between the peace that the world gives you and the peace that jesus gives you because he said this because the peace that the world gives you is temporary to start with it is temporary it is not going to last okay it is temporary and number two it is conditional it is conditional it is selfish and number three it is transactional so it is temporary it is conditional, it is selfish, it is transactional. Meaning that you have to give something to get something. You don't get anything for free. If, if, if they give you anything for free, you have to you be you have to keep looking, you know, um over your shoulders because they are coming. You are it means that you um you are you owe them something, you owe them a favor. One good turn deserves another, right? So they are coming back for you. They, are, they will remind you, they will hold you to ransom and remind you of do you remember when I did this for you? I remember when I did that for you, I gave you this, I did that for your child. Now it's your turn, even though it may not be convenient for you to give what they want at that time, but the peace that the world gives you is transactional. You will pay back, it will cost you. But Jesus said, that is not how my peace is. I give you not as the world gives. Okay? He gives you a peace that cannot be explained that, and, and does not even fit into the logical mind of man. That It's impossible to, to rationalize the peace of God. That how can you be at peace when all these things are happening around you? How can you be at peace when your loved ones are sick? How can you be at peace when you don't have a job? You don't even know where your next meal is going to come. How, how can you have peace when or you, what, whatever it is that, uh, that is not happening at the time that you want it to happen and yet you are at peace. You are at peace because you can hear God. You are at peace because you, 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 hear, you know that his plans for you are not of evil but of love to give you hope and the future you you are at peace because you trust him hallelujah so so he gives you a peace that passes all understanding according to philippians uh, chapter 4 verse 7 and it says and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus his peace will guard your hearts and your mind in christ jesus what that means is that your mind your mind and your heart will not be troubled, even when the world is troubled. See, the world is afraid. Oh, this is happening. Oh, we don't know how we're going to do this. Oh, the political unrest. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, the recession. Oh, you know? That, like, their, 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 their blood pressure fluctuates, goes up and down as the economy goes up and down. Your peace is not dependent on the economy of the country because the economy of the country does not determine your economy. Your economy comes from the kingdom of God. And one day, God willing, God permitting, I will teach this, that your economy does not depend on the economy of the country that you live in. Because if it does, <laughs> we, we, we've seen what's going on in the world today. We've seen what's going on in the world today. Hallelujah. But he gives you peace that passes all understanding, that transcends all understanding, and it will guard your heart. It will guard your mind from, being, for, from, from, from freaking out, from freaking out and being your heart from being afraid. He will keep you from depression. He will keep you from worry. He will keep you from anxiety. The peace of God will maintain your mind. He says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he says, I will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is fixed on me? Because your mind is fixed on God. Your mind is fixed on Jehovah God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. As we said last week, Sunday, that the earth is the Lord's, according to, to Psalm 24, and the fullness of it, the world and those who dwell in it. And this God is our God. We are heir to his throne. Hallelujah. All the Father has is ours. Hallelujah. So we have 
all the truths. We have all the facts and we can, we can be at peace. We fix our minds on this God and we can be at peace. Hallelujah. We can be at peace and the people of the world cannot understand it. And this peace guards, it guards our hearts and our minds. We are not going to freak out. We are not going to lose it. We are not going to be living in worry. We are not going to be afraid. Hallelujah. We are not going to be living in fear. You see, Jesus, he is the Prince of Peace. And this is my, this is my, um, my, last, my last slide. My last point. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. According to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We, we we did that last week. We covered that last week. He's the Prince of Peace. And when you take time to study this scripture and to study, to study it in Hebrew, the original language that it is written, Prince in Hebrew means ruler or a commander. And peace is shalom, which means safety, well-being, wholeness. Okay? It means safety, it means well-being. It means wholeness, your peace, your shalom. Okay? So what Jesus is telling us in John chapter 10, verse 10, our, our anchor scripture today, is that I am the commander and ruler in charge of your well-being, your safety, and your wholeness. How does it make you feel? I want you to type on, on the thing, on the comment section, how does it make you feel to know? Tell me, I want to know. How does it make you feel to know that Jesus Christ is the commander and ruler in charge of your well-being, in charge of your safety, in charge of your wholeness? When you know that for a fact, not because a, a, a preacher is telling you that, when you know that you have a conviction in your spirit, you have a conviction in your spirit that Jesus Christ he is the Prince of Peace. He is the Commander of my peace. He is the ruler of my well-being. He is the one who is in charge of my safety and my wholeness. It should give you peace. You don't have to be afraid about anything that your eyes can see. Hallelujah. You, are, you will not be afraid. Nothing can intimidate you. It doesn't mean that you will like it. It doesn't mean that it will be comfortable. It doesn't mean that it will not shake you. But at your core, you are solid. You know that Jesus Christ is my ruler. He is the ruler of my peace. He is the commander of my wholeness. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, he will make sure that I'm kept in perfect peace. He will see about my well-being. He will make sure that uh, of my wholeness. He will make sure of my shalom. He is the prince of peace. Hallelujah. He is the prince of peace. Uh, and, and he said that I have come to give you a fulfilled life. So he is the Prince of Peace, and I'm I'm, I'm trying to assure you tonight. I'm, I've come to assure you that the manifestation of this in your life, Jesus wants to assure that he there is a manifestation of this of wholeness in your life that he just your he guarantees your well being. Jesus is the one who speaks peace into the storm. He says, "Peace be still." When there was a storm, and the Bible says that there was a great calm, and I speak peace over every storm right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever storm is raging in your life, whatever things that is intimidating you, whatever things that makes you feel like you cannot go over to the other side, I command peace over it right now by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, "I have come that you may have." life and have it more abundantly and this is inclusive of your peace this is inclusive of, of your well-being this is inclusive of your wholeness hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus he is the one who will calm your fears and give you a hope of a brighter tomorrow and he said i have come i have come think about it read that scripture again because sometimes we just we just read scripture very, very quickly. We don't pause to meditate on what we have read. He says, I have come. And he has come. We are celebrating him today, aren't we? Aren't we? But he says, I have come. Meaning his presence in your life assures you of a good quality of life. The presence of Jesus in your life assured you of a good quality of life. A fulfilled life. A peaceful life. 
a glorious life, an abundant life. Hallelujah. A prosperous life, a successful life. Hallelujah. A joyous life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A life that, that, that fulfills the desires of God, the Father for you. A, a, a life that, that will make you accomplish his purposes for your life. That we should be called the sons of God. We are told in 1st John chapter 3 verse 1. He says, see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us. That we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it does not know him. And this is what we celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we celebrate. This is what we're celebrating today. That he came to make us the children of God. That he came to make us, to give us peace, to give us a quality life, an abundant life, a fulfilled life. That is why we are thankful. That is why we are celebrating. As we round up today, our month of celebration. You remember, December is our month of celebration. As we're rounding this up now, Father God, we just thank you. As we commemorate today, the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to come and give us abundant life, to bring us back home and make us the children of God. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, Father God. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, that will there be anyone under the sound of my voice who may be going through some kind of storm in their lives right now. I speak peace over that storm. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say peace be still in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. You said you have come to give us abundant life. I speak to everybody. I speak over everybody and at the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ that we all live a fulfilled life an abundant life a good quality of life because we are children of God thank you father in Jesus mighty name hallelujah amen glory to God God bless you people of God and before you go in this ministry, Liberty Ministries International, we listen to the voice of God we listen for the voice of God and for his direction in terms of what we should be doing and especially um as a as a year you know what as, what, what we should be standing on this year 2022 the lord told us that it is our year of enlargement our year of enlargement and personally the lord has brought me into into um, I have been invited into so many things. I don't know how to share my testimonies with you, but God has been really, he's been true. He's been real. He's, he's, he's um, given me so many opportunities. He has opened doors for me. Things have come to me that I did not even go looking for. And I just want to encourage you that as the word of prophecy goes forth in this ministry, don't take it lightly. I don't want you to take it lightly. I want you to know that whatever word God says to us, whatever thing that he speaks over us in this ministry, he is faithful to fulfill it. God has been so faithful to me and my children. This year alone, so many things have ha happened in our lives, in my life where God opened doors for me that I did not go knocking for, you know, because he told us, January, I remember he told us that he he will he will um, bring us into our place of enlightenment, our repo both. Hallelujah. That has been my experience. I pray that that has been your experience as well. And even if that is not yet happening for you, I want you to know that God is still faithful. I want you to know that he, his word will never return to him void. Amen. He will still, he, he hasn't, just because 2022 is, is rolling to an end, it doesn't mean that it takes that promises with it. Okay, the promises of God, they're still yours forever. Amen. They're, they're still yours for as long as you live. The Lord will continue to open doors for you. The Lord will continue to bring you to places of enlargement. The Lord will continue to give you favor. He will continue to put you in rooms that you, you didn't even, you that you were not looking to go into and, and, and put strategic people in, in places for your sake. Amen. Okay, now for 2023, are you ready? Are you ready? 2023 is our year of impact. Somebody say hallelujah. I can't hear you, right hallelujah. Right hallelujah, I can't hear you. 2023 is our year of impact. It's our year of impact. 
impact impact let me tell you the things that god will do in your life in 2023 as you aligned with this ministry as you are as you are faithful to his word okay because it is not about me it is about what i am a messenger that's all i am i am a channel that's all i am okay i am a channel that that god is using that he's speaking through okay 2023 already things for me personally things are already aligned okay and don't be afraid uh, uh, um i'm going to be i'm well i'm going to be sharing a lot of things that the lord has shared with me about 2023 i'm going to be sharing that with you next sunday which is the first of january 2023 i am excited the lord will spare all of our lives amen i want you to be here i want you to be present because i have a word for you i have prophetic word for you what the lord has released to me concerning 2023 beginning from january that uh, you know and my personal prayer that i've said to god i'm grateful that god you are doing all these things for me but i want to see it in the lives of the people that are connected to this ministry as well people that come every week to hear the voice of god to hear the word of god to hear what you have given me to share i want to see it i want to see it in all of your lives as well this is my prayer as i pray and i, and I lift you before before god okay so i want you to share your testimonies as well with me because i'm praying for you all right because i'm praying for you and the the, the things that i'm enjoying i want you to enjoy it them too and if you are enjoying them please share your testimonies with me share your testimonies so next week sunday first of january 2023 i can't even believe i'm saying this first of january 2023 i am so excited the lord has been speaking to me concerning january uh, concerning 2023 and i'm going to be sharing it with you amen as i share what the father has decreed and declared and determined for us i want you to make sure that you tell your friends to be present tell your friends to come invite your friends to come invite your neighbors to come invite your colleagues to come invite in fact invite your enemies to come as well because it's going to be glorious next week sunday when i'm going to be releasing what thus says the lord amen hallelujah merry christmas enjoy what is what is left of the day it's been it's been a glorious day that we commemorate the, the first coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we appreciate Him so much, even as we share the reason why He came today. So have a glorious week. Enjoy the rest of the. We only have what six more days left in the year now. The Lord will keep you for the rest of the year. I declare and I decree that there shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus Christ, there will be no loss. In the name of Jesus Christ, there will be no loss. There will be no loss of life. There will be no loss of properties. There will be no loss of marriage. There will be no loss of ideas. There will be no loss of vision or dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will increase you more and more. The Lord will enlarge you, enlarge your coast, enlarge your territory. The Lord will enlarge your capabilities. In the name of Jesus Christ, so that by the time we come back next Sunday, we will all come back with testimonies to the glory and praise of his name hallelujah if you want to share your your testimonies with me please um inbox me that is all i can say either go to our not even the the, the not even the uh what's whatsapp i think the the surest way is for you to inbox just send uh, send me an inbox okay send us an inbox I am I'm expecting to read your testimonies because when your your success your breakthrough they are mine as well when when you when you have your breakthrough that is when I have breakthrough okay I, I don't want to be just be um, celebrating my own alone I want to celebrate you and I can't if you don't tell me what the Lord has done for you so inbox me and tell me how the Lord has enlarged you how he has kept you this year your testimonies and next sunday we are going to celebrate together and i will release the prophetic word for 2023 make sure that you you're with yeah, your person god bless you i love you all shalom shalom i trust that you have been blessed by today's message 
For more inspirational and life-transforming messages, head over to our Facebook page at Liberty Ministries International or our YouTube channel, also at Liberty Ministries International. While you are there, don't forget to subscribe, like and share our videos so that more people can also be blessed. Join us next time for more life-transforming messages. Destiny awaits you.